maybe Monty, you can summarize for us a little bit some of the trials that, that really define the NCCN guidelines and some of the other guidelines we have for frontline therapy that have really changed in the last two years, three years to really define, you know, both, you know, the TKI space and in, in, in frontline uh, therapy as monotherapy, as well as now the combinations with IO, IO and IO, TKI. Walk us through maybe just the top level studies and data that, that kind of led to those approvals and, and uh, in the frontline space. Sure thing, Dan. So let me try to do this in two minutes or less. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, it, it, it all kind of started with Checkmate 214, didn't it? Which is a study of nevo uh versus benitinib in the frontline setting. And I think we were all really amazed with the initial cut of the data suggesting a profound benefit in progression-free survival and response rate and overall survival, particularly in those individuals with intermediate or poor risk disease. Um, still, you know, something to be said for how to manage good risk uh, patients based on that study. We can certainly dive into the details of that later. Uh, the next study to report out is one that we don't talk that much about these days, but has increasing relevance, I think, in other diseases. Uh, this was a trial of bevacizumab with tezolizumab versus sinitinib. Uh, this study did demonstrate an improvement in progression-free survival with bevacizumab versus sinitinib, but fell short of demonstrating a benefit in overall survival. It's a little different from the data that we're seeing emerge with bevacizumab in the context of lung cancer, very recent power 150 with uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, for instance. Um, and I really think maybe the topic of discussion today is going to be how to juxtapose the nevo ipi regimen against two other regimens, one being exitinib and pembrolizumab, looked at in the keynote 426 study against sinitinib. There you see a benefit in overall survival in the overarching cohort, uh, and certainly a benefit in response rate and uh, progression-free survival across the strata. And uh, the exitinib of Elamab study, or Javelin 101, which was a trial that actually looked at uh, that regimen against sinitinib once again, that study showed a benefit in progression-free survival across uh, strata, but failed to show an improvement, at least to date, in overall survival. So how is that, Dan? Does that kind of uh, give you a gist of the study? I, I think that's great. The only one you missed out was, was Cabo Sun. You know, that, and I, I'm not going to take offense. It was our study, Alliance study that really looked at, you know, one of the first studies to look at this intermediate and poor risk population and kind of showed a difference in TKIs. Uh, you know, that maybe not all TKIs are the same and that cabozantinib showed some, you know, some, some progression free survival, you know, superiority over, over sinitinib in that frontline setting. But I, I'll give you an A minus overall. I think that was a great study. That was one of my favorite trials. I can't believe I forgot it. Please I, don't take me off the program. I, I will, I will, I will. You're forgiven. You're absolutely forgiven. So, um, you know, uh, you know, it's difficult because these trials are all done fairly, you know, contemporaneous to each other. So we, we don't have really comparisons head to head, right? We have everything kind of compared to sinitinib or to VEGF targeted therapy. And, and so we're, you know, we're, we're seeing now superiority with these combinations over monotherapy. But, you know, the question comes up is, you know, are they, are they all showing the same benefit or are there subpopulations that we, we think about with, with one approach maybe being a little bit more preferable to another approach. 